hello my spooky crew and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your first time here my name is alex and thanks for coming to my spooky corner of the internet i'm a paranormal person i love ghosts i love looking for ghosts i love talking to ghosts or at least entities that i think are ghosts imagine my surprise when i move into my new apartment and i'm running into some weird things happening now granted i do own a haunted doll here she is, her name is Madison, which puts me in an interesting situation. We've been living in this apartment for almost two months now, and we've had some weird things happen. We've had a lot of our stuff disappear and then reappear in places where we wouldn't have put that object. Like for the first time since I've been engaged, I've actually lost my engagement ring a few times. Knowing that it's in the apartment, I don't freak out too much, but the fact that it's not where I leave it, is concerning and then it pops up very randomly like you know i was in the shower i take my ring off before i take a shower i put it on the bathroom counter and then somehow it ends up on the windowsill at my office so i've had some weird things happen and i'm going to dive into more of that in just a moment before we get started be sure to click on that subscribe button give this video a like and be sure to click on that notification bell so that you'll be the first to know when i upload a new video all right let's get started really okay so <laughs> having a haunted doll you get used to the activity that happens around a certain haunting that you're familiar with. Like, you know, at the old apartment, I had Frank the kitchen ghost. And before we moved out of the old apartment, I basically told Frank, I said, hey, if you want to come with us, you're more than welcome to come with us. You were an amazing roommate. And if you want to come with, feel free. If you want to stay here, no hard feelings. Thank you for the wonderful encounters we've had. Have a good afterlife. So we got, we got accustomed to like the activity with Madison and the activity with Frank. The activity with Frank the Kitchen Ghost, sometimes I do wonder if Frank came with us, but with Frank the Kitchen Ghost, Frank would basically mess with things in the kitchen, hence why we called him Frank the Kitchen Ghost. One of the really funny things that Frank would do is that Frank would, only when I was gone, would mess with the toaster even when it was unplugged. So my fiance was telling me one time about, well, the first time <laughs> about, you know, he was, he was in the living room. He started hearing like clicking, like, popping sounds very similar to what a toaster would make you know when you push the thing down to put your toast in and then it pops up when it's done and he was hearing those noises come out of the kitchen and he goes into the kitchen and he sees that the toaster is like popping up and down but the toaster's unplugged other times i've seen weird stuff happen in our old kitchen we would have things on the breakfast bar and i would watch like piles of like the food like bread and spices and all that stuff you know get swept off the breakfast bar and we were at the end of the hallway and there was a theory that somebody a skeptic a friend of mine threw around that maybe it was the force coming from the apartment on the end however there is a staircase that separated us from the rest of the apartment in the hallway so basically you have apartment 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 staircase apartment which would have been ours so if there was any sort of force that was coming in from one of the apartments down the hall i felt like it might have lost steam once it hit the stairway i would watch you know our belongings on the breakfast bar get swept off the the bar off the surface and one time when i was teaching i, I used to be a english esl teacher for a vip kids so i was always really up early in the mornings because china you know i'd be teaching and i would actually see things floating from the breakfast bar like uh, there was a, a thing of Cajun spice I saw just kind of levitate and I saw it out of the corner of my eye and I looked and I saw the Cajun spice stop levitating and then drop down which was really weird because I'm like okay that's really strange and you know I've tried to make contact with Frank the kitchen ghost but he never really he she they never really responded to any like technology that I would bring in to communicate. So it was more of just me like talking, like it was a one-sided conversation of like, hey Frank, you're more than welcome to stay here. Just don't freak us out. That's pretty much the only rule. If you're a ghost and you want to hang out here, you know, don't purposely scare us, don't harm us, don't harm the cats. You know, that if you harm the cats, we're done. Anyway, so we had Frank the kitchen ghost. Really, Frank had been there since the day I moved in. And we you know I just kind of got used to Frank. I mean, I like I liked Frank. Um, I hope Frank did come with us because Frank is a delight, but I haven't seen any of the activity that I would normally associate with Frank. We, we've gotten like no activity 
that's frank activity in the kitchen, if that makes sense. And then with Madison, with this, you know, beautiful little darling, I think there may be a few spirits tied with Madison. I have done a few videos about Madison that you can check out, including when I was trying to communicate with Madison using the Phasma box. And I thought that she said my name and, you know, saying uh, the numbers I was holding up. It's, it's a really freaky video. <laughs> but, you know, you, you kind of, I think you get used to that. And with Madison, when Madison first arrived, she was mainly messing with my fiance. And he's a total skeptic. And even then he like questions half the stuff that happens to him. She would mess with my partner and he would get legit freaked out about it to the point where I had to tell Madison, hey, you gotta, you gotta leave, you gotta leave him alone. Especially since my fiance's defense mechanism is farting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other story for another time. Anyway, but you know, with Madison, we had a lot of walking or we have a lot of walking around and you know, especially if we were like baking and something sweet would like permeate the apartment, you know, we would get some really interesting activity, you know, like knocks and everything that wasn't, you know, the language of the apartment uh, or things, you know, just kind of tapping about and moving and everything, but never, did anything go missing? You know, my fiance did have one thing where he thought that Madison was walking on his back at one point. He thought it was a cat. When he checked, there was no cat around and you know, Madison wasn't in the spot where we left her, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> but anyway, the activity associated with Madison is very calm, especially now. Now, before we moved, we were getting an increase in activity. And honestly, I mean, I had lived in this apartment since 2014. I had like six, seven years of junk that had just kind of accumulated. I was very settled into this apartment. So, you know, we had to do a lot of extensive cleaning. I'm pretty sure half the apartment went to the Goodwill. So there was a lot of disruption happening and we had some really weird activity happening. Like one of the most prominent things that was actually witnessed by one of my team members, uh, I, we had a box full of packing material on the table and you know, we're packing it, everything, you know, my team members in the kitchen, I'm doing some things. And I look over at the box of packing material and I'm seeing like stuff come out of the box of packing material, you know, like bubble wrap and paper is like flying out of the box. And I'm looking at that and I'm, and I'm thinking it's a cat, you know, cause I have cats. I'm thinking it's a cat. So I go over there and we look, there's no cat around. And you know, so my team member and I are kind of looking at each other like, huh, oh, okay, that's interesting. And I will say after everything was like out of the apartment and everything, it really felt open and clear and stuff, but there was always like this heaviness with that apartment. So I had a variety of people coming in and out of that apartment throughout my life. And many of those people I had a falling out with and that energy and that the energy of that hurt, you know, I think that did kind of resonate in the apartment a bit. So when we moved here, you know, fresh start and everything and every, everything was pretty calm until about a month ago and things have been starting to go and the activity that's happening, I don't associate it with her because this isn't her MO. I mean, unless it's a new place and she's like, oh, you know, I'm gonna try something different. In a place with hardwood floors, you would think you would hear more footsteps. I mean, I thought I'd be hearing her walking around, but I don't. So I'm seeing a lot of shadows. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you know, things are going missing, but not like missing for a long time. It's just like misplaced. Stuff is disappearing and then reappearing in places that were not like we don't traffic or just wouldn't be like a normal pattern for us. I mean, unless one of us has started sleepwalking and I don't know, I mean, that's a whole other thing we need to look into. But um, yeah, I'm starting to see a lot of shadows around this apartment, but not like bad. Like I don't get a bad vibe from it. And you know me, I mean, someone who's a paranormal person, I'm seeing a shadow and I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> hey, come back and let's talk. I, you know, I don't know, but I did find out some really disturbing things about the former tenants of this apartment. Nothing like, it's not like they were doing anything like evil ritualistic in here. It's just, they weren't, they weren't good people. Like legit, they weren't good people. Like I had the cops stopping by my apartment looking for the former tenants, one of the former tenants. And uh, yeah, like criminal record, everything, not a good person at all. So. I'm wondering if maybe there might've been some residual negative energy left here or just residual energy left by them. So, uh, you know, I did a little, I did some cleansing. I did a smoke cleansing here 
you know, just to kind of clear things. But overall, I mean, we're very comfortable this, in this apartment. I don't feel threatened at all. I don't feel unsafe. Um, I, you know, the activity that's, that's been happening, I'm kind of like, oh, you know, okay. You know, if you when you're ready to come out and talk, let's talk. You know, I may end up doing some you know, maybe some spirit box sessions, phasma box sessions, EVP sessions in here, just to kind of see who it is. Cause you know, I like to know who I'm living with, but yeah, it's uh, so in my previous apartment, you know, the activity was very like, yeah, could that be, could that be a ghost? Could that be her? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Well the kitchen stuff, things are levitating. Okay. It's Frank. Cut it out, Frank. And here now I'm like, all right, I don't know what to call you. I don't know really like who you are and mainly when I do see anything with like shadows and stuff I'm seeing and mainly like in the living room in the entrance way so I'm not exactly sure what we're dealing with here keep in mind I'm a seasoned paranormal investigator you know this is like what I do so I'm like okay but anyway I just wanted to share with you like what's been going on in this apartment since we moved in so things going missing seeing shadows and also hearing voices now we do live on the first floor and I've gotten very accustomed to like you know what's outside noise and what's noise coming in from the hallway and everything and you know nine times out of ten like the like this particular voice that I hear is coming from the living room or it's coming from the office so now the other thing the other variable that just adds a layer to all of this is that I have started collecting vintage Ouija boards so I don't think it's that one yeah and I don't think it's the other one that I got which is in my closet right now because I don't have a place for it but yeah there's some there's some weird things happening here not quite sure what to make of it, but I mean, I don't feel scared or anything. I just more so want to know who it is that's here and, you know, do they want to stick around here? I mean, or do they want to go out and explore the world? I mean, the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. is right across the river that way. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, go, 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 go live your best afterlife. So we'll see. I will keep you all posted about that. It's been... Uh, quite an adventure trying to get to know this new spirit, um, whoever it is. Uh, like I said, I don't think it's her. Um, I don't know. Could it be you? Could you have tried some new tricks? Mm, I don't know. So this was short and sweet. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your friends and family who also enjoy the spooky stuff. Let me know what you think is going on. I mean, if you are sensitive as well, you know, feel free to read this space right now. If you think you pick up on something, let me know. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next round.